Hi, my name is David Van Vranken. Welcome to my Chemistry 51C class. Um, this is just a crazy time, and I want to welcome you as we uh, embark on this journey using remote instruction uh, to teach organic chemistry and to learn organic chemistry. And I'm excited about the quarter. Um, the new technology is um, maybe a window into the way we're going to be teaching uh, going into the future. Um, I really miss uh, being in the class with everybody and having that energy there where everybody can feel the start of the quarter. Um, but we're going to make this work and we still have the opportunity to interact through Zoom office hours um, and Zoom discussion sections and I encourage you to stay interactive during the quarter. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, this is the third quarter of organic chemistry at UC Irvine, Chemistry 51C, Organic Chemistry. Uh, we're using the, the textbook by Janice Gorzinski Smith, Janice Smith, um, and we're going to be covering chapters 18 through 25 in the book. I use the fifth edition, the sixth edition is almost identical. There's a few differences in the problems. We'll try to see if we can cross correlate those for you who are using the sixth edition of the book. I will start off the quarter by trying to talk about why you should invest in organic chemistry. You know, I fell in love with organic chemistry and um, Maybe it was just that I loved solving the problems, but I wanna to try to convince you why you should want to invest your time to master organic chemistry. Uh, organic chemistry, in my view, is mainly an engineering field for building molecules atom by atom and bond by bond. And what kinds of molecules can you build with that? What kinds of functionalities can they have? If you look at every single computer device that you own, your cell phone, your computer, the the integrated circuits in there were made using organic chemistry. The photoresists that they used to create those intricate patterns uh, were, were organic molecules. The new versions of optical switching that they have um, are based on organic frameworks, oftentimes incorporating a metal atom. Uh, display technologies, if you've heard of OLED displays, organic light emitting diodes, those are organic molecules in there. That's why they're called OLED. Uh, energy storage, like lithium ion batteries, are all based on uh, polymer membranes made out of organic molecules like polypropylene, new versions of, of those um, of the charge carriers or of those membranes are all going to be based on organic molecules. Smart materials that can tell you when, when there's been some sort of a break and can heal themselves, those are based on organic molecules. If you want to be part of that future designing the new materials that would drive technology and society forward, um, then I invite you and I encourage you to embrace organic chemistry. Uh, the one topic that I'm leaving out here is the one that's most obvious to me. Most organic chemists aspire to work in the pharmaceutical industry making drugs. And the one theme that is permeating this entire quarter and our entire class is the COVID virus. Uh, two days ago, the Science Magazine came out with an issue dedicated to the COVID virus. You can see that enemy up there in the upper uh, left-hand corner, that's uh, COVID-19, or a model of COVID-19. Um, and in that issue of science, there was an article uh, on the race to find treatments for COVID-19. And they had a diagram in there for the SARS virus from uh, I can't remember, a couple of years ago, um, which operates through a similar mechanism and is, is structurally similar to, to COVID-19. And they show the pathway by which this thing transfects cells or transform cells. And they talk about some of the types of drugs that could serve as treatment options. One of them is to take antibodies out of, uh, take, take serum or blood out of people and harvest their antibodies and use them. That's not going to be a wide scale solution. But the other potential solutions are small molecule drugs. These are molecules that are designed and built by organic chemists. If you ever wanted to learn how do I learn to create and design and build drugs like that, that's what this class is about. I picked the first molecule on here, camastat mesylate. I could have picked any of these. Um, this is the chemical structure of camastat mesylate. It's actually an old drug from the 1980s. Um, it inhibits human transmembrane protease serine 2, and it's been approved for chronic pancreatitis, pancreatitis, and postoperative ref reflux esophagitis. Um, not for coronavirus infection, but once a drug is approved and shown to be safe by the FDA, MDs can prescribe it for any other disease that, that, that they want to. Um, and when I look at this molecule, these are exactly the kinds of molecules that we teach you how to build in chemistry for 51C. The answer for how you build molecules like that is you take a course like this. 
the, the chemist who built this molecule and designed it took a, an organic chemistry class just like you. And we're sitting down and working problems just like you. We're going to be covering in, in Chemistry 51C this quarter, in chapter 22, exactly how to build carbon nitrogen bonds like this amide bond here. We'll, we'll tell you how to hydrolyze nitriles into carboxylic acid derivatives like this one over here in chapter 22. Also in chapter 22, we'll teach you how to make esters like these two carbon oxygen bonds over here. Starting off in the quarter, we're going to teach you how to make bonds between benzene rings and nitrogen atoms. Uh, so electrophilic aromatic substitution is first on our plate. And then at the end of the quarter, we'll teach you how to make salts, like this mesylate salt that they've, that they've used to formulate the drug uh, by reacting amines with, with acids. Um, so chemistry 51C is where all the pieces come together, where you learn how to build molecules, um, where, where you learn how to build drugs. Now, you may not be interested in working in the pharmaceutical industry designing medicines, or you may not be interested in engineering materials or OLED displays. Uh, a large fraction of this class really wants just to go on to medical school or dental school or pharmacy school or optometry school. They expect you to understand medicine, physiology, and biology at the level of atoms and bonds. And we are organic um, beings on the planet Earth. Everything is organic chemistry. And so they'll expect you to know organic chemistry in order to gain entrance into those schools. You'll have to take uh, very, very difficult exams like the MCAT or the DAT or the PCAT or the OAT that will test your knowledge of organic chemistry. Um, once you um, take those courses, it's hard to remember if you've never really learned the stuff for the first time. All of those are review programs and they assumed that you mastered the material at some point um, and are ready to review it again. So really embrace the material this quarter, even if your goal is to go off and, and and go on and be an MD or a pharmacist or an optometrist, awesome, more power to you. I want to help you do that. But try to embrace organic chemistry this quarter because it's going to help you to reach that goal. Let's talk about who's running this course. Um, this is a course that's run by the University of California at Irvine. Uh, they hire me and my team to, to teach you organic chemistry and then evaluate you and assign grades at the end of the quarter. So um, <clears throat> this is our team this quarter. We're here to help you. Uh, Sarah Augustine, Jason Combs, Robbie Dorn, Jay Gupta. You know, we are your team and we're here to help you. We are going to have office hours this quarter using Zoom. Um, you can find our, our, our Zoom addresses on Canvas and the office hour times that will be available. Um, so we're here to help you. Um, the way to think about us as your team, try to think of us as your Sherpas. So the Sherpas are, are an ethnic minority, I think in Nepal, um, and, and they help people who want to climb Mount Everest, right? This is your goal is to ascent, make an ascent on this summit um, of understanding organic chemistry. But the, the Sherpas do not carry people to the top of Everest. They carry equipment to the base camp. Uh, they help people to make the ascent, but ultimately it is up to you it is up to you to take responsibility and make that ascent. We're here to help you. We're part of your team. Um, you've paid money for us to help you. And, and we want to help you because we love organic chemistry and our hope is that we can instill that excitement into you. So uh, take advantage of us. That's what we're here for. So uh, I assume everybody in this course is already taking chemistry 51A and 51B here at UC Irvine. Again, we use the Gorzinski Smith textbook, Janice Smith. Um, I'm typically referring to problems out of the fifth edition, but the fifth edition and the sixth edition are, are virtually identical. In, in, in Chemistry 51B, uh, all of my lecture videos are available from winter 2013. Organic chemistry has not changed in the past six years, but um, <clears throat> we covered a slightly different material in winter 2013. If you go back and access those, those videos on YouTube, we have a link on our website, our links to those videos. Back in, in um, 2013, we covered chapter 18 in that second quarter, and now we've moved that to, to 51C. So if you look at my old exams that we've posted on our Canvas website, you might notice that there's um, an odd distribution of material, and that's because we've changed our chapter coverage um, a few years ago. 
I also have available my UJA videos for uh, recording my lectures from fall 2019, and those should be accessible through our Canvas website. Um, the challenge that you're going to face this quarter in Chemistry 51C is that you spent the first two quarters not really learning the way organic chemistry works. They started off by teaching you about SN2 reactions as a way to do chemistry and as a way to form bonds, but that's not how organic chemists make bonds. That's not how biology makes bonds. Uh, you know, in biology, you form phosphoryl bonds by attacking P double bond O, or you form amide and ester bonds by attacking C double bond O. Um, organic chemists and nature attack double bonds to oxygen. Um, and you're going to have a hard time getting away from this SN2 type thinking that you've had, uh, I don't know, six months to learn, to overlearn. And so it's time to unlearn that during this quarter. We're going to teach you different ways to sub make substitutions and to form bonds, and it's not going to be SN2. So that's going to be your struggle is to get away from thinking that way. I, I think it may be kind of obvious, but um, our syllabus is posted on Canvas. Uh, we've moved a long ways away from the, the time when we used to hand out paper copies of our syllabus. And last year, the University of California, Irvine, moved away from its old electronic system and went completely to Canvas. So you should be used to using Canvas to access information, um, and particularly information about grading, access to lecture notes, access to files, which problems we recommend or do not recommend in the book. All of that's on our, our Canvas website. The important thing that's on, on any syllabus is how is your grade determined? That's really what you need to focus on in my class or in any other class. Uh, it, I have a somewhat standard uh, grading scheme. The homework is 10%. Um, and then the rest of, the, of your grade will be determined by exams. Um, the difference is that because of this whole remote instruction, we're all new to this, I'm making my final exam optional. So the first three midterms are worth 30% each. The final exam, if you don't take it, you don't have to, it'll, it'll be automatically worth 0% and we'll calculate your grade based on the, on the first three exams. If you do choose to take the final exam, and all of our exams will be administered on using Canvas, using the Respondus proctoring system. If you do choose to take the final exam, it will automatically replace your lowest midterm grade if it is higher than your, pre your previous three midterm grades. So, um, I don't give makeup exams. That's what the final exam is for. And ultimately, at the end of the, um, ultimately, I'm going to be determining your grade in a scheme that's very similar to what other uh, sections do in Chem 51C. We typically give about 50% A's and B's and then about 50% C's and lower grades. And my final is cumulative. All my exams are hard. And if you can make over 90% of the points on the final exam, I'll give you an A in the class of some kind because I'm confident you know the material. If you, No matter what grade you made on the other exams, I don't care. If you can make over 90% of the points on the final, then I, I think you understand the, the, the content of the course. This is a basic calendar for the 10 weeks of Chemistry 51C. It's not posted in this format on the, on the Canvas um, website, but you know, we've got our lectures once a week. We've got uh, exams times that are posted on Canvas and they kind of distribute in this way. Our final exam is on Wednesday, Wednesday of final exams week. Um, so you've got to get started today, uh, working problems, going to discussion sections. And so let's go ahead and talk about that. So uh, in chemistry 51A and 51B, they used uh, the sapling online homework system, I think in all the sections. Um, if not in most of the sections. And so you should already know how to use sapling. If not, there's a set of tools in there for you to learn how. And so get started immediately working those problems. They're challenging uh, and sometimes they're kind of nitpicky. So you, you have to really focus on, on what the questions are asking. So uh, get started on the sapling learning. I, those are the kinds of problems that I'm going to be asked. I've handpicked those problems. And so they're the kinds of problems that you, I expect you to be able to work when you get to my exams. And that's what my exams will be, all problems. We have discussion sections th this quarter, and my discussion sections are very active learning. So generally in quarters when we can meet in person, 
we break up our discussion sections into groups of students. Students, each group will be assigned a problem to work on. They'll converse, You'll, you converse with your, your people in your subgroup on how to answer the question. And then um, when all the subgroups are done working their problems, then a, a person is chosen at random to go to the board and present the answer to the rest of the class. So the rest of the class knows how to work a problem like that if it should appear on the exam. This is your opportunity to learn how to work with other students, with other people on problems, and how to talk about science and talk about solutions to problems in front of other people. Those are essential skills that, have, that go way beyond the, the topic of organic chemistry, and I think they're absolutely essential. Discussion section is, is mandatory, uh, but it is not graded. We don't take attendance, but you should be going there to learn how to work problems. And sometimes you'll find that when you're working problems with other people, you find that you've got the same questions that they do. And that's fulfilling and, and satisfying in, in some sense. So during discussion section, you'll log into your Zoom session. We have those Zoom meeting rooms posted on our Canvas website. We'll break you up into Zoom breakout rooms and each group will be assigned a problem. And, uh, and then uh, the TA will jump between the breakout rooms and provide hints and encouragement to keep you guys going. And then when you've finished in uh, finding the answer to your problem, you can return to the main room. Um, and when everybody's there, we'll, we'll have each group, somebody will be randomly selected to present to the class how to solve that problem. And we'll be using uh, the Zoom annotate function in order to be able to draw chemical structures on, on, on the screen. And you can see that's, that my drawing skills with a, a mouse are not that great, but it's completely understandable. I think if you have a stylus and a tablet, it would be even easier. This would be very hard on a phone, so I recommend that you do not use a phone to, to go to um, discussion section unless, that's, unless you have absolutely nothing else because it'll be hard to, to draw chemical structures with your finger on a phone. <clears throat> The Department of Chemistry has a peer tutoring program, and uh, our, our section of Chemistry 51C has been, will be assigned peer tutors this week. They have not yet been assigned and posted on the web. Uh, these are people who know how to ace Chem 51, so you should go to their office hours uh, because they will teach you how to, how to answer questions on sapling or on the problem sets or just help you if, if you have have some difficulty with some problem that you just can't get around. Uh, you, you could just go to our office hours or their office hours and work problems while we're there online. To, uh, you, know, you don't have to say anything, but it's just nice to know that there's somebody there who can answer your questions. Take advantage of us. We're, that's what we're there for. There's nothing more depressing for me than when I go to my office hours and nobody shows up. That is awful because I'm committing the time no matter whether any, somebody shows up or not. Um, and it's, it feels good to give to give help. Some of you didn't make the grade that you were hoping for in Chemistry 51B or even Chemistry 51A, and um, probably because you were missing some really essential concepts. You don't need to remember every single thing from those two quarters. In fact, a lot of what you learned, frankly, is not all that useful for Chemistry 51C, uh, like this. this insane devotion to SN2 chemistry is not really the focus of what we're doing this quarter. Uh, what sometimes I, instructors will give a review session at the end of the, the quarter, that, that's crazy. I'm, if, I'm going to give a review session at the beginning of the quarter. So any concepts that you weren't strong on from 51B and A, let's practice those concepts this, this coming weekend. I invite you to be online with me from nine to 12 uh, on Saturday morning and um, not in DBH 1100, I'll replace, sorry, that's a typo from a previous year. Uh, um, we'll meet online and we'll practice working some of the key concepts from, from the previous quarters. Uh, not all concepts are key. Maybe four chapters are key from the previous two quarters. <clears throat> so if you have questions about chemistry, I encourage you to hang out on the Zoom session afterwards and ask me after class, because I've got Zoom and we can use Zoom Annotate. Or ask me during my office hours, where, where I'll have Zoom and we can use the annotate function to draw chemical structures. Do not send me emails about chemistry and then 
type out chemistry questions about chemical structures and reactions on a computer keyboard. I, I can't read about chemical reactions when they're typed out. I can't write about chemical reactions and structures by typing on a computer keyboard. Uh, that's not what email is for. So email is for asking questions about course, structure, grading, and logistics. But if it's not on our Canvas website, then that's, that's what you use email for. Um, try to be courteous in your email. Don't ask questions that are so broad I can't answer them, like what should I study for the exam? I have no way to answer that in, a, in any sort of a time. Or don't start your question by saying, quick question. If your question is really quick, why double the length of that question by saying quick question? I'm not very enthusiastic when somebody sends me an email and says quick question because it usually means the question is quick and the answer um, is insanely long. Um, so show courtesy uh, using email or any format of communication uh, this quarter. I'm gonna finish up this, this intro to the class with a quote from Benjamin Franklin. Uh, he was an, a famous scientist and statesman and a founding father of the country and the Constitution. And he said, drive your business. Drive your business. If you were a student here at UC Irvine, your business is your education and your classes. And you need to drive it and stay on top of it and be in front of it. Drive your business. You have to be ruthless. You know, a real CEO of a company fires people that aren't efficient, stops doing things that aren't leading to the goal of the company, focuses attention and effort on things that really will make the company profitable. And you need to show that kind of leadership, that kind of business sense towards your education and towards this class. Benjamin Franklin's full quote was, drive your business or it will drive you. I think all of us have been in a position where you fell behind in a class or in some task and you just could not catch up. You felt like you're being dragged behind a stagecoach for 50 miles. Um, so get out of here today and get on top of the material and stay on top of the material. And I know you can do it because legions of students have done that and we would not have admitted you to the university if you weren't capable of doing that. I'm perfectly confident that you are capable of mastering this material and staying on top of it. All right, I look forward to working with you this quarter. In just a minute, we're gonna start on the chapter 18 material.